Hello guys, um, my name is Joseph AGK RG. I'm with you again. Um, as you can see, I'm really enjoying my time, the time I spend with you guys. Can't blame me. Uh, I'm a teacher, so I always like to teach. It's my passion. Anyway, today um, I'm gonna introduce you to um, another concept of uh, probability that we call um, mutually exclusive events. Uh, mutually exclusive events and also the addition rule of probability. So let us start. Mutually exclusive events. We call them uh, mutually exclusive events because they cannot occur at the same time. For example, look at these two events, A and B. A and B, they are separate. They cannot happen at the same time. A is separate, B is separate. So we see that A and B are mutually exclusive. How about this one here? In this case, A and B are not entirely separate because they have an intersection here. This is where they occur together. See? So because of that, we say that for this particular event, A and B are not mutually exclusive. Okay. All right. So let's look at this question here. But before we do that, um, in fact, let's go ahead and look at it. It says here, decide if events, if the events are mutually exclusive. Event A, roll a die, roll a three on a dice. Event B, roll a four. Or dice. Well, if you are rolling only one dice, then these events are mutually exclusive because a three cannot occur and a four occur at the same time. So, I don't know if there are two dice, then it is possible. But if it's only one dice, three can occur only once. And four can occur, they can only occur separately. They cannot occur at the same time. What, what am I trying to say here? You cannot get a three and a four on this face at the same time if they are one dice. But if there are two dice, then it is possible. So I wrote here that um, the first event straight the second event is four so these two outcomes cannot occur at the same time and because of that i say that they are mutually um exclusives okay let me give you more examples of events that are said to be mutually exclusive look at the first one one can either be a democrat or a republican so it is not possible for you to be a Democrat and a Republican at the same time. It's impossible. So we say that these two events are mutually exclusive. Another example, if there are two events sitting down and standing up, you can't be sitting down and standing up at the same time. So the event sitting down and the event standing up are mutually exclusive. How about this? The event getting a four and a six um, on a single card is when a single card is done. How do we know it? Let's look at the, the chart for a card. It says the event of getting a four and a six at the same time in a single card. When we look at the card we have here, no, no, see a six, right? All this card here are six. All these ones are fours. So you cannot get a six and a four in the same card because of that 
we say that the, that the two events are mutually exclusive. Okay? Now, next thing we're going to look at is how to solve probabilities of mutually exclusive events and also how to solve the probabilities of non-mutually exclusive events. In each case, the key word is or, and we use the formula that we call the addition rule of probability. So, um, remember the key word is or. Whenever the, the equation have this or, that will tell you automatically that you are going to use the addition rule of probability both for mutually exclusive events and for non mutually exclusive events now look at the formula right here okay the formula is this the addition rule the probability of a or b is probability of a plus probability of b minus probability of a and b <clears throat> Now, some authors will remove this part if they are mutually exclusive. But me, I keep them because if the events are mutually exclusive, when you are solving it, this part will turn to zero. That means that you'll be left with only these two parts. That is why I don't bother to remove this when I'm writing it. Because if the events are mutually, suppose you don't know whether they are mutually exclusive. In that case, this would be you be on the safe side using this formula, okay? You be on the safe side using this formula here. In that case, this is how we turn to zero. Now, we can also write this formula in this form. Probability of A union B is probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. So they mean the same thing. This one here also means the same thing as this one here. Okay? They all mean the same thing. Now, if there are three events, you can also use it. Probability of A or B or C equals probability of A plus probability of B plus probability of C minus the um, probability of A and B minus probability of A and C minus the probability of B and C plus the probability of A and B and C. And you can extend this to, uh, as, to uh, as many number of events as possible for these two formulas. Now, let me tell you this. In statistics, we, we deal with a lot of formulas. Some of these formulas might look, may, they may look like a monster, but don't be scared. When you start applying them, you will see that they are actually easy. Okay? Like, as I'm going to show you in a few examples, let us try our first example here. It says here that um, at a political rally, there are 20 Republicans, 13 Democrats, 6 Independents. If a person is selected at random, find the probability that he or she is either a Democrat or an Independent. So the key word here is or. Just, um, so that or tells you that you're going to use the addition rule. Okay, first of all, you list the, the um, values so that you can find the sample space. This is a good example of an empirical probability because you can find the sample space by yourself. There are, let's D be for Democrats, R for Republicans, I for Independents. We are, the question says that we have 13 Democrats. So, this is 13. It also says that we have 
20 Republicans, so R is 20, and 6 Independents. So when you add them, you get your sample space as 39. Now, we are ready to solve the equation. The question was, find the probability that he or she is either a Democrat or an Independent. So we have probability of D or I. Because of that or, we know that we are going to use the addition rule. Okay? Now, you're going to be probability of D or I equals to the probability of D plus the probability of I minus the probability of D and I. So you plot them in. For D, we have 13 Democrats out of total of 39 uh, politicians at the rally, right? So 13 out of 39. For the independent, we have 6 independent out of the 39 uh, politicians there. 6 out of 39. Minus Democrats and independent. You cannot be a Democrat and at the same time become an independent. So that's going to give you 0 over 39. So you can see why I was telling you that if they are mutually exclusive events, this part will automatically turn to zero. See, you can see that it turned to zero. So then our answer becomes 19 over 39, which is 0.487 if you put this on the calculator, or 48.7%. So that means, uh, some people usually ask me, how do you put it on a calculator? So I'm going to show you uh, how you can put this on a calculator. We have 19, right? Um, 19, have 19, then divided by 39, okay, 39. Then you press the equal sign, so you can see that it gives you 0.487, that's right here, and that is what we have here. That means there are 48.7% chance that the person selected can be either a Democrat or an Independent. Makes sense? I'm sure it does. Now, we can try another example. Look at this. It says, a single card is drawn from a deck. Find the probability that it is a, a king or a club. Again, the all is the key here. It tells us that we are going to use the addition rule. So let us see. Let's use K to represent king, C to represent club. So we have four kings. How do I know that we have four kings? By looking at this chart. Look at this. Look at the king right here. One, two, three, four. See, four kings. That's how I got four. For clubs, how many clubs do we have? 13 clubs. How do I know that? Look at the clubs here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So I have 13 right here. 13 clubs so that the probability of king or club equals probability of king plus probability of club minus the probability of king and club so for king we have four kings out of how many cards 52 cards how do i know because if you count all these cards here they are 52 in number okay then for club Probability of club is 13 clubs out of 52 cards minus club and king. Is there a card that is both a club and a king? Mm. Let us see. If you look at this card, you can see that this is the clubs right here. All the clubs. All the kings. You can see that this card fall in the king and also in the club section. So we have one card. That is both a king and a club and that is how we got this one here one out of 52 cards 
giving us 16 by 32. Now, again, some people want to know how you get this, get answer in the calculator. We have, okay, 16 by 52, this here, 16 by 52 will give us some. Um, we have, my card had um, 16, okay, by, divided by 52 cards, giving me this number here. You can see right here, point, uh, point 0.3076, which can be rounded up to 0.308 or 30.8%. Uh, so we have 30.8% chance that the card can be a king or a club. So those of, those of you who do gambling with cards, so you can see the required probability. Uh, before I finish the topic of probability, which is still a big, a broad uh, area, I'm going to show you how to calculate the probability of winning a lottery. Uh, so you can see how slim it is and that why many people lose anyway. So I hope you are enjoying my lecture so far. I hope so. I'm sure you are. Now, um, we are ready to do another example, which will be our last example here. It says here, the result of 985 pedestrian deaths that were caused by accidents are presented below. See? Uh, pedestrian is intoxicated, yes and no. And then, then driver is intoxicated, yes and no. So they give us a total of 985 pedestrian deaths. So it says, choose one pedestrian death at random. Find these probabilities that the pedestrian was intoxicated or that the driver was intoxicated. B, the pedestrian was intoxicated or the driver was not intoxicated. So the first step here is always to find the totals, totals, which, I, which is I did already. How do I find the total? You add these two. 59 plus 79 is 138. 266 plus 581 is 847. Remember, you can always verify this uh, with your calculator. So now that we have the totals, we can begin, it, we, uh, we can begin to answer the equations. Now, let us use P for the pedestrian is intoxicated. P, come P, uh, C as the pedestrian is not intoxicated. D is the driver is intoxicated. DC means that the driver is not intoxicated. Actually, call it D complement or P complement. You know, that's another way of representing the complement of an event. Remember the complement uh, that we did in my previous, one of my previous uh, lectures on this uh, probability. So the first question says to find the probability that the pedestrian was intoxicated or the driver was intoxicated. Again, the key word here is or. That tells us that we are going to use the addition rule. So we we'll plug it here. P D or P, pedestrian was intoxicated or driver was intoxicated. His probability the um, probability of P plus the probability of D minus the probability of P and D. So we we'll plug it in. For pedestrian intoxicated, which is this one, P P, we get from the table. All the pedest intoxicated pedestrians here we have 3 to 5 out of 985. You can see right here. 3 to 5 out of 985. Plus, then this one is this. The driver was intoxicated. All the intoxicated drivers, see? See, driver intoxicated. Oh, but I use the totals right here. 138 out of 985. 138 out of 985. Minus, in this case, both the pedestrian and the driver are intoxicated. In that case, we look for their intersection. 
uh, I told my students, I tell them all you have to do is to drive, draw a line, draw a line here because it says both the pedestrian and the driver were intoxicated. If you draw a line from here for the drivers and draw a line here for the pedestrian, uh, pedestrian because it says yes, yes, yes. So when both of them are intoxicated, is this is where both the pedestrian and the driver were intoxicated. So where your line crosses tells you where both of them were intoxicated, which is 59. So out of 985, so you can see that 59 out of 985. So you can, if you solve this and calculator and plug it in, you get this answer. Um, now, there's a question my student always ask me. They ask me, how can you do all these things together in a calculator? So that I can show you right away. This is what you do. You have the first one is put parentheses first of all, okay. Now they all have the same denominator, so just do the top and divide every answer by the bottom. So you have um, three two five, um, three two five, then plus sign. We got um one three eight okay one three eight then we have minus here minus fifty nine okay minus fifty nine now you can close your parenthesis here then divide everything by nine eighty five because all of them have a Denominator of 985. 9, 8. Oh, excuse me, I have to go back so that I can put the division sign first. So I divide, division sign is here. Or here. They have 9, 8, 5. And that gives me the answer right here. You can see the answer right here. Uh, 0.410 which is what we have here of what one point of what one percent so they are put one percent chance that both the driver and the pedestrian or uh, that either the driver or the pedestrian are intoxicated but to part b says find the probability that the pedestrian was intoxicated or the driver was not intoxicated okay now this is the formula right here the um, probability that the pedestrian or the driver pedestrian was intoxicated or the driver was not that means d complement will be pp plus pd complement minus pp and pd complement now pro the, this one means the probability that the driver is intoxicated that the pedestrian was intoxicated which give us here all the see this is Pedestrian intoxicated, all the intoxicated pedestrian are 325 in number out of 985 overall. You can see right here 325 out of 985. See the plus plus the probability that driver was not intoxicated. All these not intoxicated drivers, see driver intoxicated, this is no. So no, all of the all the non-intoxicated drivers are eight four seven out of um nine eighty five. Okay, eight forty seven out of nine eighty five. The minus. Okay. Both the the pedestrian was intoxicated. Um. Okay. But the driver was not. So you draw a line here. Uh, pedestrian was intoxicated. Driver was not. So you can see that they intersect here at this point here. This is where both the, the driver was intoxicated, but the pedestrian was not. Actually, not it is not this. The driver was intoxicated, yes, but the pedestrian was not. See? 266. You can see right here. 266 over 985. So when you work it out on a calculator, 
you get 90.92 or 92 percent chance now i want to explain one more thing because that was the kind of question my students always usually ask me they say when i was adding this when i was adding that the driver was not intoxicated i also added put uh, both the this part contained pedestrian and also this part so how come i'm using this total because it included both here and here well the answer is i give them is this that is why we usually subtract this part so that it will take care of those uh, two combinations okay so that's answered our question and that will be the conclusion of our lecture today um, i hope you enjoyed my lecture please please remember to subscribe uh, so that you will get informed as soon as i have a new lecture available thank you guys and bye bye